I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. One nation under God. Indivisible. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. With liberty and justice for all. Please, 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 please sit down, relax, put away your American flags for now. <laughs> it is a great day for America, everybody. Uh, particularly for me, there is a new American in town. How about that? Go. Oh. Yep. That's right. Three hundred million and one. <laughs> This is my first week as an American citizen. I was sworn in on Friday. Uh, I, by the way, I would just like to uh, express my gratitude to all the people of America. Uh, you're probably thinking now, well, there goes the neighborhood. But I'd like to thank... <laughs> I'd like to thank every one of you except one or two. <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> and I'll never forget. I'd also like to thank all the people who gave me the honorary citizenships over the last year, who made me feel very welcome, welcome when I wasn't a citizen. And now that I am a citizen, I will still honour my honoriness. <laughs> anyway, the greatest honour of all, of course, for me is, is citizenship itself. And if I could say it, I would say it. Citizenship. <laughs> That is a great honour and I'm very grateful. Thank you to everyone who helped make it happen. And it, it was just, a, it was just a, a spectacular weekend for me. I, it was a, I just had a lovely time. It was maybe the most, the most amazing weekend of my life, of, of the ones that I remember. It was the amazing... <laughs> well, it started with the swearing-in ceremony on Friday. And we had the cameras there, so you can see that later in the show. And now I can vote. General election and American Idol. I can vote. <laughs> That's right. It's awesome. I feel, I feel so powerful. What will I do with all this power? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> anyway, the ceremony, the swearing in ceremony was at the LA County Fairgrounds. And you could tell it was the fairground because the people who park the cars are carny folks. <laughs> And there's nothing like handing the keys of your car to a one-armed guy with an eye patch. <laughs> nice car, mister. How many bodies can you fit in that truck? <laughs> By the way, us carnies like to talk like pirates. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> yes, we're distantly related. Back in the old days, we were pirates. Now we just stay here. <laughs> anyway, I get sworn in uh, in Pomona with 3,500 other people in this giant auditorium. Uh, and a few of those people were from Mexico, which was a surprise to me. I didn't expect that. <laughs> anyway, after the ceremony, uh, you know, I, after it was sworn in, everybody was clapping, they're congratulating each other. I threw my sombrero in the air. <laughs> anyway, when I got home, right, when I got home from the ceremony, there's a package waiting from my boss. My boss is David Letterman, right? And, it, and you know, this package, meat. I know! It wasn't just any meat. This is, uh, David Letterman goes to uh, the, the best butcher in New York, Lobel's, and these were the, this was unbelievable meat. These were the most succulent sides of beef I've seen since I was on the Drew Carey show. I'm talking <laughs> spectacular meat. Spectacular meat. Mm. So I spent, I spent my first night as an American. I ate a steak, I ate some apple pie, and I fell asleep. <laughs> That's right, America. Mr. Excitement is here. No more sleep for you guys. I'm practicing on new stuff. What do you think? Anyway, so on Friday I became an American, right? 
Saturday, wait to hear this, I'm not kidding. Well, tell us then. Well, shut up and I will. <laughs> Saturday, I became an American pilot. I've been taking flying lessons for a long time. Saturday, I soloed for the first time. <laughs> It's tough going solo in those little airplanes. The bathrooms are very cramped, if you know what I mean. No, no, no. What I'm saying is I flew the plane for the first time without the instructor. And just me and the plane, just me! If I wanted peanuts, I had to go back and get them! <laughs> I had to be rude to myself when I was walking onto the plane. Anyway, when I, I was taken off one of the times, like, the, you know, you take off and land three times, that's your first solo, right? And I'm taken off one of the times, like the second time, my instructor was at the side of the runway, and he's gone like that. I didn't have a radio or anything, and he was, uh, he was going, flaps are done, your flaps are done. And I'm like, what? I didn't know what he was doing. I, I, you know, I, I didn't know my flaps were done, and that's dangerous, right? And I was about to take off, and he's going, your flaps are done. So I was like, I can't believe it either. I think he's gone a bit fruity now I'm out of the plane. I think he's doing jazz hands at an airport, is that? Anyway, I made it back in one piece. The plane will be fine when they fix it. So everything's great. So that was a Saturday I become an American pilot. Sunday, I had the most patriotic day of all. Oh my God, that Super Bowl. Wasn't that fantastic? I mean, I, it was like a movie. It was like David versus Goliath, the perfect Patriots versus a scrappy little team from a town no one's ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never win. Come on, we'll just do our best. All right, coach. <laughs> We don't stand a chance. New York, never heard of it. Get in there. <laughs> anyway, I actually predicted the winner on Friday night show. I, not many people thought New York were going to win, but I knew they were going to win, and I have proof. Let's see the clip from Friday's show. No, but I don't know who. <laughs> do the Giants know who? I'm not sure they do, and that's why I think this confusion of who, who, is going to cost them the game. That's right, I'm going to say New York Giants, 17 to 14! <laughs> I'm from the old country. We have the gift of second sight. <laughs> Ask me another. Yes is the answer. <laughs> anyway, it was a good... <laughs> I had a big weekend. I haven't slept at all. Anyway, it was a great game is what I'm saying. I never realised how brutal the Super Bowl can be, though. I mean, guys hobbling around, straining their muscles, taking tons of painkillers, and that was just Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I was like... <laughs> Say though, I have to say, and no lie, I thought that was great that halftime show. I thought that was awesome. And like an American band playing songs that everybody knows the words to. That's a halftime show. It was awesome. It was like, I'm falling, I'm free fall. I was doing it like that in my house with a scarf, and it was fantastic. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's a good girl. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Remember last year's halftime show? It was Prince. Prince is alright, I like Prince, he's fine, he's talented, but there's an awful lot of... Like... When does it start? And the only thing I really remember about the halftime show last year was, was this. Do we have the... Yeah, Prince with the guitar there, remember that? Yeah. He was, uh... He was very happy to be there, though. Wasn't he? <laughs> there have been some great Super Bowl halftime shows. Paul McCartney did a great halftime show. Do we have a picture of Paul McCartney? There he is. Uh... <laughs> I may be an American, but I ain't going to quit doing that. <laughs> Remember a couple of years ago, the halftime show was uh, Aerosmith. They, that, they, are, they were great. They're, that's a great band, but I actually think Steven Tyler is starting to look a little weird. Do we have a picture of Steven Tyler? Yeah, there he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Anyway, look, after the halftime uh, show, the, after the Super Bowl, right, the fourth quarter is what I'm talking about. The fourth quarter of that game, I was like, oh my God. And I had a, we had a pot of chili in our house, right? A big pot of chili. And I'm like eating it during the game. Like, mm -hmm. And then, like, the fourth quarter, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, I was like a gallon of chili. I'm not kidding. And like last night about four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I'm like, oh God, one of the dogs is sick again. <laughs> like, I was like, oh no, man, that dog. And then it was the smell of chili coming out of my pores. <laughs> my pores, I was like, oh. <laughs> I had to take a shower in the middle of the night. I was like, oh, smell won't come off. <laughs> and it, it wouldn't come off. I had to take a bath in guacamole. Anyway, I had a great weekend. <laughs> I became a pilot. I took the oath of allegiance. And I watched the Super Bowl. God bless America. We'll be right back. <laughs> My name is Charity Jarrett and I'm an American citizen. My name is Jorge Alvarado and I, I am an American citizen. My name is Kofi Efa and I'm proud to be an American. My name is Melia Unto and I'm an American. My name is Cesar Alberto Alvarado Miranda and I just became a US citizen today. My name is Alejandro Inalion and I'm an American citizen. My name is Mimi Veldman and I'm an American citizen. My name is Craig Ferguson and I'm an American. Welcome back, welcome back, Naughty Monkeys. There you are. <laughs> so, you know when you think, there cannot be, there cannot be, I just talking about my weekend, you know, you, you become an American, you fly a plane, you sweat chili out of every pore, you think, there cannot be a more, a, a better weekend for a Scotsman in America. There ca it cannot happen. But there's always one. <laughs> Lawrence Tynes, New York Giants kicker from Scotland. <laughs> he won the Super Bowl! I'm sweating chilly and going, mmm, in a plane. He's like, oh, I'm going to Disneyland! I'm like, mm, I think one of the dogs is sick. <laughs> Now, like, you know when you, you become an American, you probably know about this after you were born, but I... <laughs> I thought that, that as soon as I become an American, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to get jury duty, right? Or some invalid, yeah, it's going to be jury duty, or the CIA are going to get in touch and get me to assassinate a foreign head of state or something like that. You know, something boring. Anyway, my first job as an American citizen, I can exclusively reveal tonight is performing at the White House Correspondents' Dinner this year. I'm doing it. I'm the one. I know. We can get that fixed. Anyway, they... So, I, I'm not hosting it. President Bush hosts it, right? He's the host. But it's a big fancy party in D.C. It's like the Oscars for politicians, right? Where you kind of cry and thank your agent. There are 2,000... <laughs> 2,800 uh, journalists in attendance. There's congressmen in there, sen senators are there, military brass, the cabinet. I sit at the top table with the president and the first lady right there. And I'm thinking, does he know I can't be kicked out now? <laughs> I mean, I thought it, was like, it would be the big thing. Come on, have the dinner and go, ha ha, my last act as president. You go home, Ferguson. I'll be like, I am home. <laughs> So, you see, I'll be there, so I'm going to do that. Don't thank for that. Um, I, promised you, uh, I promised you earlier on we would have a... Uh, we took the cameras to the ceremony, and we did. Take a look at this. You know, I'm a little tired. It's early. You have to get up early to be an American unless you're born here. They're coming to America, as Neil Diamond said. They're coming to America. Well, well they're already here. They're coming to San Bernardino. You see that over there? Look, look over there. Jalapeno's Mexican food, uh, Outback Bar, Australian food. And I'm thinking maybe they should have some Scottish food here. <laughs> yeah, 
when you're sworn in as a citizen, not a lot of people do this. Look, you get a free boat. You get a boat. <laughs> this is quite exciting. This is like, you know, I'm becoming an American today. For those of you who were born here, that's like, this is like the day you were born. And you remember how exciting that was. <laughs> exactly. I hope I don't have to change my name. I might have to change my name. It's like Ellis Island. I don't know where I'm meant to go. Do we go down there? Yeah. How are you? I'm good, I man. You a lot of time. Oh, you do? Oh, thanks. Thanks. Can you get me ahead of the line? <laughs> which is the show, but you couldn't get, let me cut in line. You know why? Because we live in a democracy. That's why. Hi. What show is it that you're from? I, the, I'm, my name is Conan O'Brien, and I do the Conan O'Brien show. I feel I overdressed a little bit. No one else is really wearing a tie. But you know what? It's a big day for me. I'm wearing a tie. I think a lot of Americans know that Bob Hope was born in, in Britain. Alexander Graham Bell, 1847 to 1922, introduced the telephone in 1870. Bell was born March 3rd, 1847 in Edinburgh, Scotland. Yeah. And, take away the beard, who's that? <laughs> John Paul Jones, 1747 to 1792, American naval officer. Born July 1747, Kirkubrishire, Scotland. Now to Friesen Galloway, Scotland. Mm -hmm. Please stand and come to order. The United States District Court for the Central District of California is now in session. The Honorable Philip S. Gutierrez presiding. The top most represented country in the ceremonies today is Mexico. Yeah. Please stand so that you can take the oath of allegiance. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath. I hereby declare on oath that I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America. The Constitution and the laws of the United States of America. Against all enemies against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States, so help me God, so help me God. Congratulations. So you're an American citizen now. I'm an American citizen now, don't give me any of your Now what do you want to do? Uh, well, I'm going to exercise my right to freedom. I'm taking off my pants and I'm walking home buck naked. monkeys <laughs> that wasn't really like a monkey at all was it? is that really a monkey <laughs> it's getting like a chip monkey i suppose a chipmunk hey do you think a chip monkey is uh the technical term for a chipmunk It's interesting, sometimes when you start saying something, and this happens to me a lot if you watch the show regularly, you start saying something, you think it's a joke, and then halfway through you realise it's not a joke, it's just a sentence. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a punchline, it's just some random thing meandering through your brain. <laughs> and there it went. 
yeah, we're very, we're very busy tonight. Do we even have time for an email? I want. Well, there's always time for email on this show. Well, there's always time for email on this show. Yes, there's always time for email from a guy or gal or she mail comes straight. Ferguson is a giant email ho. All right, let's see. This is from uh, Al in uh, Los Angeles. Al in L.A. Probably in the music business. <laughs> Hi, my name's Al. I live in L.A. I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> Would you like a back rub? <laughs> Perfectly innocent guy sending an email in, but attack him anyway, I say. <laughs> anyway, Al says, Dear Craig. He says, Dear Craig. Now that you're an American citizen, does that mean there's no chance you will be knighted by the Queen of England? Um, yes, I think, I think that's the final nail in the coffin there. <laughs> Up until that point, everybody thought he's, he's a shoe in for a knighthood this year. That Prince Charles impersonation, the Queen loves that! <laughs> uh, here's one from Ale Alejandra in uh, New York City. Um, she says, uh, or he says, Alejandra, it's a she, right? Uh, Alejandra does a... <laughs> we can cut that out. Uh, she's, she says, uh, does Scotch tape come from Scotland? <laughs> Wouldn't know. I'm an American. <laughs> no, I Still Scottish as well, Scottish and American. It's kind of like being bi curious. <laughs> Here's an interesting one. This is from Taryn in Mal Malvern in Arkansas. Oh, I like Arkansas. Good catfish. Um, she says, uh, Hey Craig, if given the opportunity, would you talk to a ghost or run away? You know, it's the eternal question, isn't it? I don't know. I. I, I, I mean, it depends. I, I've always wondered why people, when they die, suddenly become evil. You know, like when ghosts, like you can be a kindly old grandpa, dies, and then comes back and says, oh, you're kind. Like, you weren't evil before. Yeah, that was before. <laughs> I, think, I think I'd probably talk to a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> but I might run away. It depends on the ghost, really, doesn't it? I mean, you, I mean if it's a, like if it's a ghost going, oh, I have some new. Or if it's like a sexy ghost. Like, you know. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, look at my ethereal boobies. I'd be like, hello. But if it was like, eh, I've got a booger from the other side, I'd be like, no, no. So it, to answer your question, it would depend on the ghost. All right, we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Congratulations, Craig, on becoming a United States citizen. And I bet you consider yourself lucky, because with all of the talk about immigration, I was afraid the Republicans would come after you for not speaking English. But apparently you stuck through. Well, now that you're a citizen, I have to ask you for your vote. I would be so honored to have your first vote. Congratulations, and welcome to citizenship. Congratulations, Craig, on becoming an American citizen. Very proud of you. But there is one thing you got to do you got to quit wearing those Speedos in public for the sake of this nation. Stop it. I will never, I will never, and let me assure you, let me assure you, lovers of America, that I exercise my right to wear tiny little shorts wherever I can. Huckabee's just jealous because I've got a nicer ass than him. <laughs> Craig, no one has a nicer ass than Mike Huckabee. Oh, yeah? Well, check this out, mister. <laughs> I can't believe he said he had a nicer ass than Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee has the greatest ass in politics. Well, he doesn't. Not anymore. <laughs> I take that. I'm getting angry about nothing at all. <laughs> Which is something my first wife used to always say as well. <laughs> I digress. My, my, uh, my guest tonight, I wanted uh, to have perhaps one of the most beautiful women in America. She's in a new movie, uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which is uh, out on April the 18th. Take a look at this.
As you know, I love you. Are you breaking up with me? You're standing on the dock, and I'm in the lake. Sarah, I swear to God, I'll jump in the lake like a merman. Do you want to put some clothes on? Would you like to pick out the outfit that you break up with me in? <laughs> Please welcome one of the prettiest Americans ever, Kristen Bell, everyone. Kristen Bell. Good, Good. it's well. lovely to see you. I, may I say you look a little tiny bit French? I do? A little bit. You Could know, it with be the, the stripes? stripes and the boots. You look like a little kind of sexy French resistance girl. Thanks. But let me just tell you, resistance is futile. Oh, <laughs> How are you? I'm excellent. Yes? Yeah. Uh, you are an American, of course, aren't I you? I am, yeah, yeah, yes. Though I did grow up on the border and both my sisters were born in Canada. <gasps> Oh, you didn't tell me this. You have Canadians in your family? I do. Uh, that's I, do. Right. I have Canadians in my family. They're much like us. Well, they are. I used to think it was hysterical, though, that my sisters had to carry those cards that said aliens when I was little. Really? That said resident aliens. I think you have to have your full passport now. To cross the border? Yeah. yeah you do. And you get a retina scan. <laughs> I made that right up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you grow up? In Detroit. Really? Detroit, yeah, Michigan? the heart of the country. Yeah, I've always heard that Detroit's quite rough. Yeah. Is it really? It is. It's, uh, well, they make the cars there, and right. there's a lot of bad streets. And now everyone can reference 8 Mile. I grew up on 10 Mile, so it's two more miles better than 8 Mile. Is it two miles tougher or two miles softer? Softer. All right. That must be kind of embarrassing. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, people say, where did you grow up, 10 Mile? Oh, um, la da <laughs> When did you come here? Uh, five years ago. Really? But I lived in New York for five before that. Did you like New York? I loved it. Did you, have you ever heard of the New York Giants? Apparently their football team did very well at the I, weekend. I know, I watched it. Did you, are you a fan? I, well, I, everyone, in the, <laughs> everyone in the room was rooting for the Giants, and so I felt I'm not very confrontational, so I did as well. But you're not really a fan, are you? No, well, sure. I'm not not a fan. Well, that's as good an answer as any. <laughs> Did you have any chili when you were watching the game? I did. Vegetarian chili. It doesn't make any difference. It's the beans that do the damage. <laughs> it's been doing damage. Oh, my Lord. Oh, really? Do you have that? I know. <laughs> it's, it, I was sweating. Everybody it. has it. Come on. Really? I don't know if everybody has it. I, feel, I felt very bad. And my dog, like, because my dog had been sick last Blame week. Blame it on the dog. Well, I tried blaming it. I'm, I, I blamed it on the dog last week. But they had... The you dog, it on the dog. My dog was sick last last week, and it, I got up in the middle of the night. Because of the chili? No, no, the dog doesn't eat chili. Oh. Come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then uh, the dog was sick. I got up in the middle of the night. The dog had had a little poo inside the house, and I had, a you know, little one. No, a very big one. <laughs> That's what I thought. Well, he's a German Shepherd. Whoa. Oh, I know. Very big, and he always likes to march at night. <laughs> German, you know. <laughs> and. <laughs> But he had, and also, the, you know, anyway, he had a poo at night, he couldn't help it, and uh, he, um, but I got up, uh, and I thought he'd had a, I thought he'd been sick again, and it wasn't, it was the smell of me smelling of chilli. <laughs> I know! I know, and the dog's like, mm-hmm. That's hideous. I mean, he's not gay, but he did do <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, he might be gay, I don't know, he doesn't have testicles now, so it's kind of, uh, doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. He, is he better now? Well, he's still not over the whole testicles thing, but yeah, he's all right. <laughs> You know, you can get noodles. you can put them in. You can get, I researched it, because when I had to neuter my dog, I thought, this is such a shame, because it feels so, I feel like I'm taking something away, and you can actually, yeah, there's a website where you can get, like, really extra small or extra large, and, I mean, ultimately, it's, you know, it's a pretty penny, just for their dignity. Just tell them, get over it. <laughs> it's a real thing. Do they make them for humans? I don't. I don't know. Do you need them? I may later. I don't know. I, that's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. so, but does the dog even notice? I mean, the, it's all the way at the other end. No, it's, it was me, what do you call it? Anthropomorphizing, like you, when you put your... Oh, your thoughts into yeah, the dog's head? I thought, man, he's going to be so ashamed. Because you know I'm a major dog person. I oh, have three yeah, dogs. Oh, well, really? What do you have? Three rescues. I have uh, two corgi mutts, like little tanks. Yes. They, they're really the pudgy. The queen has corgis. Do you yeah. Know? yeah. Boom. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I, ha I adopted a 13-year-old uh, a black lab from Katrina, and you're talking about pooping uh, in the house, right. which reminded me that she does it all the time because she's old. Oh, and you forgot? What? No. no, I remember every morning about 5.30. Uh, but here's the thing, though. She eats anything. She has no idea. Well, this is water. She has no idea. <laughs> You are adorable. You are adorable. And thirsty. I know. She has no idea what uh, is food and what is not. Like, she's eating a deck of cards. She's eating a pack of cigarettes. She pooped wood chips for like two weeks. And I don't even have wood chips in my yard. And I'm thinking, where did you get this? Yeah, that maybe she's going out and doing some carpentry on I the side. I have no idea. I have no idea what she's doing. Oh, but my Lord. She eats anything. You, I, I used to have a dog called Joe that did this thing that when he was asleep especially if like i had my aunt or uh my in-laws at the time over this dog joe he would sleep and he had this giant he would sleep on his back is what i'm saying and he had an enormous I can see where you're going with and this. he just would like and, it, and he would dream like whoa, 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 whoa. Like it was awesome You know what I should have got him was those little false testicles. Right. He would have spectacular. Just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been like, oh. If it's going to be a showcase. Yeah, I didn't know you were such a dog person. You're an animal yeah. rights person. You? I'm, I'm an animal lover. I'm a big, I mean, I believe they should have a lot of rights. But I've always been the person that, like, I, I actually, when I was growing up, there was a period when I was about four where I didn't even want to eat with my family and I would make them put my, do my bowl next to the dog dish and eat it with my face. Wow. <laughs> I don't remember that, but that's what my mom tells me. So I've always had issues. I, d I did a bit of that. I did a bit you did of... did it? Well, eating off the floor? <laughs> yeah. It's called the 80s. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Well, we have to take a break. We have to take a break. Can you hang uh, around? Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll be right back with Kristen Bell, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. I am. Uh, I'm here with Kristen Bell, which is my right as an American. And I. Uh, we, are, are you uh, very? Have you ever taken a look around America? You ever driven across the country or anything? I've done. I, I did when I moved from New York to Los Angeles. Oh, you did. But I have a problem with geography. Ah. And when we were driving, I can't really. My mom was driving, and I also, when I'm in a car or in a plane, it's like a bassinet. Whoa, 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 wait, what? wait, wait, wait. You moved from New York to here five years ago and your mom was driving? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we had like a U-Haul of all my stuff and I okay. didn't feel comfortable doing it by myself. But she partly, she drove because on a plane or in a car, I fall asleep real quick. Really? Like that. You Lights never out. want to get a pilot's license then. That's I probably not can't. I probably can't. Yeah, no. But I also, since I can't tell where I am, and when I worked in San Diego, my girlfriends used to joke that because I doze off in the car, they would just take me to Mexico and drop me off. And I thought, that's not That's funny. not friends. They're nope. not being friends <laughs> if they're doing that. <laughs> well, we were driving and we had left, well, we came from Detroit because we drove a lot of my stuff from Detroit. And we were um, probably just passing St. Louis and I went to bed and I thought I'd been out for like eight hours. And I woke up and I said... So this is Denver, and we were just, we were like half an hour outside of St. Louis. <laughs> Felt like Denver to me. It's, it's nothing like Denver. I've been to Denver. I've been outside St. Louis. They're not the same. So I've been told. Yeah, there's not a lot of skiing just outside St. Louis. No. I got to ask you though, if you're driving from Detroit to LA, what the hell are you doing in St. Louis? That's a long way out the way, isn't it? Well, I think your mom might be taking you to Mexico to drive you over again, the border. But maybe I'm t maybe I'm telling you we went through the wrong cities. Oh, really? It's in between Detroit and I'm not trying to be an airhead, but it's in between Detroit and Denver. What is? I checked. I don't know if it is or not. I don't know. It, it, it is, is, isn't it? I I just got here. I'm just a new American. <laughs> they didn't have that on your test? They, they don't have Wait, you got and the citizenship at the circus grounds? Yeah. yeah. Are you sure that's legal? Boom. <laughs> Ding! American. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like one of the it's like the Legoland driving license. It's really, you know, it's useful. That's fantastic. It is. I almost know. brought you cupcakes, but then they said everybody gave you cupcakes and you got a lot of gifts. Yeah, you you you're fine on your own. You don't have to bring you don't have to I bring I was gonna. Gifts. What did you bring? What? Well, I was gonna. I <laughs> Everybody did the cupcakes, and I was gonna go meet. So it's like the cupcakes the or nothing. That's, what That's I say the way all the you time. do it. Cupcakes or nothing. All right. Well, Are you gonna get a mullet? Uh, yeah. You're gonna be a true American. Yeah, yeah, but not in my head. 
But you, <laughs> you got it. You have to at one in time in your life. I bet you everyone in here has sported a mullet. Uh, no, no, no. I can't. Yeah. I, I don't need to Business get a mullet. This is in the front, party in the back. You have to. Are you going to, are you going to get a mullet? Now? I had one probably two through seven. My mom liked to take my bangs all the way to right back there. Did she cut your hair when you were asleep in the car? <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> we're completely out of time. Thank you so much for coming in. I should have asked you about your movie, but it doesn't come out until April, so come back. Okay. All right, then. Kristen Bell, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back. My, my, uh, my next guests are known for their trademark Scottish tribal sound. They've got a new CD titled uh, Rant, which is out now. And they're here with me tonight uh, to reassure any of my uh, expatriate brethren or anyone watching at home wondering if I'll stop being Scottish uh, now that I've become American. Well, here's some proof. My guests are wicked tinkers. our first show with our regular American in the job as opposed to immigrant labor. I would like to thank uh, my guest Kristen Bell, the fantastic Wicked Tinkers. We're going to have some fun. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow.